everybody, I'm Ashka. And this is Lin Yu. We are doctoral students at UNC Chapel Hill in the School of Information and Library Science. I am researching how people find information about climate change data models and the impacts of those data models on their lives and their personal finances relative to their belief or disbelief in climate change. And I am studying how archival processing workers do their daily job, what tools they use, and what their histories are like using ethnographic methods. In this series of videos, we will walk you through an undergrad class on the basics of library and information science, or LIS. It's modeled after introductory classes from lots of LIS schools or iSchools. These are professional schools that train librarians, archivists, information scientists, data scientists, UI UX researchers, informatics researchers, and so on. But instead of long lectures, here we're going to try to deliver as many key points as possible to you in a shorter format. That means that you'll learn the basic vocabularies that allow you to understand what people are talking about. And with each lecture, we will also introduce critical aspects that will help you contextualize basic concepts. Throughout this course, what you'll find is that all of the concepts and methods we go through are interconnected. LIS is a field that thinks through the causes, effects, and consequences of our information society. So what exactly are we covering in this lecture series? In this first lecture, we're going to review the LIS field in general. We'll discuss where people are doing their research and also show you some career tracks that you can pursue in iSchools. Then in the second lecture, we'll discuss core information theories from symbol that we call data to the process of informing and to the accumulation of knowledge. We will also introduce you to data feminism and its critique of data as well as its call to action. In the third lecture, we'll talk about information infrastructures. There, you will see why library science and information science live in the same department, using examples of libraries and AI algorithms as infrastructural systems. We will then discuss studies in information seeking and information retrieval that aim to improve information systems, as well as social and ethical problems of information systems, like library book bans, big data, and AI ethics, and gaps. In the fourth lecture, we will study information ecologies, how technologies impact economies and the environment, and how humans ourselves are being changed by our computers. We will also introduce the underlying theory, actor network theory, or ANT, and its variants in both humanities and social sciences. And finally, we'll talk about ways to design or redesign information. In our last lecture, we will talk about design justice and its critique of systemic problems built into designs. Then we'll introduce human-centered design and prototyping methods, as well as how to balance design with sustainability and maintainability. Okay, to start with, let's talk about LIS, Library and the Information Science. What on earth is it? Before iSchools became iSchools in the 2000s, they used to be library schools. These schools primarily trained professional workers in libraries, archives, and museums, also known as LAMs. Libraries, archives, and museums each have a pretty long history, and they take different shapes in different cultures around the world. What we are looking at today is their Western modern shape that dates back to 19th century, when first modern, modern library schools were established in the US and in Europe. On the library side, governments found public libraries and tasked them to educate citizens, and this is still very much the case today. In libraries, librarians make collection decisions as to what books and materials to buy or accept, how to categorize and organize them, and how to help people find what they need. Of course, the public here is itself a problematic concept. In the US, during racial segregation, the public meant specifically the white public, excluding black, indigenous, and people of color, and in lots of cases, also exclu excluding women and other genders. So when we think of libraries today, we still need to reflect on whose and what interests they serve. Adjacent but different, Public archives save huge bunches of governmental papers and historical records. These materials serve as evidence to inform government decisions, and they also hold government decisions and public instances accountable 
for the future, which usually means at least decades, if not centuries. And of course, they are important materials for any kind of historical research. And similar to libraries, archives are also part of a troubled history. Here, Archives habitually treat records of well-established institutions better, while ignoring materials, histories, and knowledges from marginalized communities. This is again still very much an ongoing issue for archivists today to solve. Still a bit different, modern museums grew out of curiosity cabinets where people collected objects for display and attraction. And later some of them became public institutions and others non-profit and educational organizations. Some museum objects are local stuffs, while a lot more came from around the world by explorations. This used to be a much more problematic business than today. During colonial time, colonizers looted materials and even humans from colonized areas and put them on display for Western audiences. Today, museums around the world are still slowly repatriating these objects to their original communities as part of their history. Museum works focus a lot more on curating exhibitions compared to libraries and archives, so they tend to bring in lots of people like artists, historians, anthropologists, and so on. But long-term preservation of museum-collected objects is also equally important. After all, all of these LEM institutions are meant to pass knowledge from generation to generation. If we think of library science as long-term public stuff, then maybe we can say information science is a bit more ephemeral and corporate oriented. But in reality, both fields have some traditions and cutting edge touch technologies and both also have their places in public and private sectors. What we call information science today grew out of the 1950s and 60s trend of social sciences and communication engineering, and it was part of efforts to make studies of documents, communications, and society more scientific and systemic. In 2005, a set of North American schools founded iConference, and iConference gradually became the conference of LIS schools all over the world. Information science also became part of this new iSchool model, combining library science and information science under the same umbrella. One part of information science that's really important is record or data management. Let's go back to the 1950s and 60s. After World War II, with populations and economies growing quickly again, people needed to collaborate on larger, larger scales across groups and areas. This generated lots of paper records that needed to be coordinated and that needed decision making around them, and people increasingly needed machine systems to sort and search for useful information among the huge piles of papers these machines are, guess what, then new technologies like punch sorters and early digital computers. This was also a time when scholarly research grew quickly and generated lots of publications and data collections. Data management was meant to help governments, corporate managers, and scholars, to name a few, make use of these records and systems. This big social and technical change broke into many new disciplines. Library science took up some of the record management specialties, while business schools also picked up data management and data analysis. Computer science also came into shape around this same time, dealing with the formalization and analysis of data. And similarly, we have information science. Much later, we have data science, and now AI is becoming a discipline in this space, which brings us back to where we are today. This entire realm of record management touches database design, search algorithms, information seeking and retrieval, user interface design, human computer interaction, data mining, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and so on. Another founding part of information science is communication. It began when researchers eyed telecommunication engineering problems like encryption, networks, and signal transmission. Lots of these problems came to the fore during World War II, where keeping communication channels connected and safe became very high stakes. Researchers turned communications into mathematical models so that engineers could focus on solving quantified problems, transmitting and encrypting signals without concerns with specific texts or meanings. The internet itself also came as a communication issue. When the Cold War between the US and the Soviet Union threatened centralized communication infrastructures, the internet came as a way to guarantee controls and commands without any central points. Cybernetics, or the theories of feedbacks and controls, also had some relations here as well as in AI research.
Today, LIS also goes beyond technical training and engineering models. Library and Information Science Today brings in aspects from philosophy, sociology, cultural anthropology, material studies, and so on. Critical data studies make clear that data are not facts, but arbitrary measurements and human judgments. Critical archival studies creatively examine and rethink archives with humanity's Im imagination. Media and communication studies enrich social and human contents beyond mathematical models of communication, helping people understand things like misinformation, disinformation, mass media, and social media. Infrastructure studies and science and technology studies, or STS, use human-centered critique to question technology's histories and developments. Document studies and knowledge organization research concern themselves with abstract philosophical problems like what information is and how it is structured. And finally, political economy examines the human cost behind neutralized and naturalized systems that exploits people's labor by race, gender, and social classes. All in all, LIS is a very eclectic, broad field, and iSchools tend to be very diverse places, at least intellectually. LIS work is often practice-oriented, but it also has critical cores. It doesn't just focus on very specific mathematical questions, and it's also not pure theoretical philosophy stuff. Personally, we think LIS is a pretty good field to be in, but of course, every field has its drawbacks and problematic traditions, as we mentioned before. And you can decide for yourself throughout this course if this field is the right place for you. So with all of that field overview and history in mind, what can you actually do with a degree in library and information science? Honestly, undergrad programs in LIS are still relatively new, so information about undergrad career paths is a little bit scarce. To help here, we're going to look at some master's tracks for inspiration. So on the library science side, you can expect many librarianship tracks. There's academic librarianship for university librarians who help students and faculties find scholarly works. There's a digital library's digital humanities track focusing on digital tools. Media librarians specialize in multimedia and visual resources. You get instructional librarianship focusing on teaching. And there's public librarianship. This one is probably among the most omnipresent careers, and it provides local communities all over the country with basic education and information resources. The archivist track is usually an umbrella track called Archives and Records Management, or ARM. The ARM track is generally concerned with archives management and how it's organized, this kind of work. And if you want to work with historical material preservation specifically, iSchools are not usually the place. Instead, you will get trained at preservation schools and conservancies. As for museum curators, usually they are also trained or co-trained in art history departments and museum schools. On the information science side, there's usually a data science, data analytics, databases track, training people to be data scientists, data analysts, or database managers. You have information retrieval and text mining. That's where people focus on text data and also work with text-based search algorithms and natural language AI models. The user experience human computer interaction track is for front-end people researching and creating better user interfaces. And there can be a management track for product manager roles as well. There's also an environmental informatics track that focuses on GIS or geographic information systems and biomedical and health information research also has crossover tracks. Besides these more practical tracks, you can also find some research focused tracks in iSchools. Sociology and political economy research usually goes by a social informatics title. And there's also the knowledge organization or information studies track focusing on critiques more towards the humanities side. Critical Archival Studies is another track that has a lot to do with arts and humanities series, as well as community and social justice issues in the archives. Again, these areas could differ from school to school because of faculty capacity and different education goals. For reference, here's a similar page from the University of Washington iSchool, and they're just a more information science focused place. Here you don't see many library or archive tracks. Instead, they have specializations in cybersecurity and software development. 
or this example from California San Jose State University School of Information. Here, they don't offer as many corporate-oriented information science training opportunities, and they don't do that much research. Instead, SJSU's program focuses on getting students into librarian and service careers. Of course, what you are seeing here are all master's programs. Right now, undergrads, as you probably are, your bachelor's degree in information science could launch you into the tech industry similar to those in computer science and data science with some more training in critical approaches. Or if you're interested in library, archive, or museum work, you probably need to take a master's program titled MSLS or MLIS at some point. For these master programs, you can also get a bachelor's degree in other subjects, and on top of that, get a master's degree in library science or information science as a professional credit. These are all viable career options down the road. So that concludes our very first lecture in information and library science. We hope you have a clearer big picture of the LIS field now in both the past and the present. LIS is a vast interdisciplinary world, so this lecture is not exhaustive. It's a field with a lot of potential. In the next lecture, we will introduce some core theories of the information science field, and this will ground you better in the language of the discipline, and help you see where some different theories and subfields connect with each other. We will see you next time. Until then, stay informed. And stay well. Peace. Peace.